Hey guys, today I want to show you something about OSC messages. And OSC messages are sort of, we can think of them as a very modern MIDI protocol. Um, they're messages that we can send through a network card, through through a network basically, uh, and we can use them, it stands for open sound control. So uh, naturally we can use them to control sound. Um, and the way this works, I want to show you a couple of diff different implementations and a couple of different use cases here. So first to get started, what we need um, inside Ableton is uh, something called OSC Sender. And this is, uh, let's see, it's under the MIDI effects and we can load this on a track and it just looks like that. Now, if you cannot find this here, this is part of the Ableton Connection Kit. And I've showed some of the um, some of the things in the Ableton Connection Kit before, like the camera, which is a device that can track your webcam movement and use that to write automation data. Um, but you can find that uh, right here um, on the Ableton website, and it's for free, so that's a good thing. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this to control Reactor because Reactor supports OSC. Now, not every synth supports OSC, but there there are more and more that um, that do. And Reactor is one of them for, for ages already. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm, I have this drum loop right here. Uh, actually, let's just play this whole thing. And I want to convert that to a new MIDI track so that we actually have MIDI because what this OSC MIDI send does is the name sort of implies it, it will take a MIDI note and send that to an OSC address. So now what I can do is I can actually load this on this track. So not on the first track. Uh, let's see, also not here. So what, what this will do, we can see that um, there's two things that we need to set. The first one is the host. This is your IP address. And if you're just working on the same computer, this will be um, either localhost or 127.0.0.1 that, that refers to your own computer. And then the second thing we need is the port. Now, every every uh, network has a lot of different ports or sockets and these have a specific number and so this is the port it's basically the door or the gate where we want to send this to it's very similar to midi ports so if we now go into well actually let's first just play this midi clip and then we can should see a note and a velocity <laughs> So we can see different nodes and different velocities. So now what we can do is we can go into Reactor and we can open, go to File, open up the OSC setting. You can see that I have Razor loaded right here. And what you want to do is you want to set this port to the same number, 2346. And then if you do that and you play this and we go there again. <laughs> You can see those messages coming in and as soon as they come in we can assign them to something so we need to go into edit mode for that um, but then one thing we could do for example is we could right click the cutoff and rather than doing a midi learn we can do an osc learn um, of course for that to work just as with midi we need to actually send the signal so we'll just play this And now we can see this knob jump around. Now, if we go to the connect tab here, we can actually see that the OSC receive is uh, set to a certain value. We can also from Reactor set up an OSC send. So we can send this value um, on to some different device, which is kind of cool. So right now, um, the way I like this approach, like you might be thinking, well, why not just do MIDI learn? I like to have these, these MIDI nodes controlling the synth because it can be very, it can be very precise. So if I just switch this off right here and I'll hide reactor for a second and we take a look at the MIDI pattern, um, we can alter this to get to get some cool Neil sounds. So we can mute some notes. can make something really dance with the groove. Another thing you can do, of course, is add, let's say, an arpeggiator to this. 
um, so that we can create some stuttery kind of effects. Of course, for that to work, this needs to be before the OSC MIDI send. Now, right now, this doesn't sound very tight because we still have a reverb enabled here. If I switch that off. Another thing with OSC is that MIDI has this, this um, disadvantage or limitation, I would say, of 128 different values. With OSC, um, it's sort of infinitely precise. We can have, have up to thousands of different values. So it's a very precise standard and it's also very fast because it works with your network card, which is basically the fastest component in your computer. So um, this, is, this is one use case. We could now assign this to other things as well. Uh, we could open Reactor, we could take, for example, this this reverb perhaps, and we could set up the wet level to the same pattern. Now this is actually a third advantage is that these, rather than um, saying CC12, we can actually give something a name. So in this case, this one is called Velocity1. We can now go to the wet level here. We can add a new address and we can also say Velocity1 to assign that to the same thing. So this is much easier to work with because you're basically working with variables. So now this wet level should move as well based on our drum pattern. Alright, so that's one use case, but I should note that this right now, this is not happening inside Ableton. What this OSC thing is doing is sending it outside of Ableton to just your computer and to the network card. And then um, Reactor understands that it will listen to that. So that means that you can, this Reactor is right now running in Ableton, but you could also run it in standalone mode. Or it could even be on another computer if you give it a, the IP address of that other computer. So that's a very cool thing because this OSC means that, that different um, applications such as Ableton and Logic or Ableton and anything else can communicate together. And just to show you um, that that actually works, um, there's lots of different applications that can send OSC messages. Uh, some of them are Osculator. You might have seen those iPad apps like Touch OSC and um, what's the other thing called, uh, Lemur. Um, and those all can send OSC messages as well. And they can run on an iPad or they can run on a phone and you can use them to control Ableton or Logic or any, any DAW basically. Um, so one other thing I want to show you as well is um, this application I have right here, which is called Processing. What you can do in Processing, it's a free application and you can make a sketch and you can send that sketch or certain parameters of that to a net address or to your computer and to your network card and you give it here a port as well. So if I play this sketch, this is what it looks like. It's basically a small animation of stars, I guess. Um, I could change the speed of that, make it a little bit slower maybe. Let's try that. All right, so we have some beautiful stars, right? So now this um, is being sent to this address. And don't worry if you don't understand all of this, I don't either. The only thing I did is I took an example sketch and then at some point I told it to send my OSC message to Ableton. So it's actually way easier than what it looks like. And we call this message star hit. So now if I go to Reactor, Let's first see if we can see those messages coming in. We should because it's running on the same port. All right, so we see our star hit. So that's the, that's the identifier. And then we see the value. And the value in this case is how high the star is hitting the border of the screen. So if it hits the border at a very high position, it gets a high value. If it hits it at a low position, we get a low value. So now we could set this up again. We could simply go to connect here. We can, oh, we see that it has already learned that. Um, Let's do this for the filtered cutoff. So we go here, we can remove our velocity or we can keep it, we can use multiple and then we can say slash star hit. And there we can 
see it moving around. So this is like you might still be wondering why why that what what's up with this? Like why would I go through all the trouble? For me, it's a nice way of just coming up with new ideas, trying new new different things. Um, sometimes I don't feel like spending time in a MIDI editor to make my initial idea. So what I will try to do is make some sort of an animation that comes up with an idea. Of course, we can map this to pitch or anything like that as well. So let's, um, let's actually hear what this sounds like right now. change the speed here again um, was it here like I said I'm also not great at this uh, let's try that and then we need to run the sketch again this is a very by the way this application in general is very nice to start experimenting with code because you have this instant visual sort of overview of what you did <laughs> Right, so that's just a basic introduction of OSC messages, um, what they are. If you um, want to know more about this, just do some Googling on this. There are people that made some very, um, actually very interesting projects with this by making animation, sending it to Ableton. Um, there's a lot to find about the topic. Um, so hopefully that gives you some nice new inspiration and things to do. And um, I'll see you in the next video. If you're an aspiring music producer and ready to evolve your sound, find out more about our San Francisco Ground Campus, online classes, and one-on-one -on -one mentorships at pyramind.com.